Well, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining our last study for the year 2023. Um, tonight, we're studying in the reservoir on page 80. If somebody will hold their book up since I have a Kindle version. So thank you. So if you'd like to join us, page 80. And our topic tonight is prayer of relinquishment. So let's begin with a prayer, please. Dear Heavenly Father, be with us tonight as we share about surrender. May our conversation inspire each other and those listening. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I really like this study, so um, I'm going to read from the book. I think some good information in here. The beginning quote is from Hannah Weidel Smith. And the quote is, it is wonderful what miracles God works in wills that are utterly surrendered to him. So what does that mean? Did any words jump out at you? Surrender. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah it's surrender. Surrender. Not my will, but your will be done. Anyone else? What jumped out to me was, because um, I know about surrendering to him, but the part about wills, and that made me really think about, um, you can't surrender if your will is in charge. And so that brought a lot of thoughts. Mm -hmm. So let me go on and read a little bit farther and see what you think. At the core of what makes us human is our will, the ability to choose. The goal of spiritual formation is not to destroy the will, but to transform it so that over time we come naturally to naturally will what God wills. The prayer of relinquishment says, thy will be done. This prayer isn't resignation, a sigh of whatever happens, happens. This prayer is agreement with God, our will becoming like God's will that we might live our life as Jesus would live it. So what do you think about those words? Those are pretty heavy to me. Mm -hmm. What do you think about the part about um, to transform over time so that we come to naturally will what God wills? Can you do it overnight or is it a process of time that takes time? Jim? I think it's a process, and I think the key is not my will, but yours be done in the scripture reading is what Jesus taught us. You know, God gave us choice, free will, uh, to have our own will, but uh, to surrender it to me means that our own will is so broken and perhaps more accurately uh, crucified that we're prepared to give up the very thing that we value the most for the greater good and the greater love. Thank you. Anyone have any examples that you can think of you'd like to share of your process? Jim? Well, I actually have three as I reflect on my life. Um, uh, you know, I, I've known these moments of these seasons in my life where God has brought me to the end of myself, or as Pastor Jim stated last week, to rock bottom. Uh, in 1997, uh, I was fired from a very high-paying uh, six-figure job as uh, president of a manufacturing company because the CEO didn't ask, he ordered me to do something that I thought was not only unethical, but that went totally against my Christian values. And then, of course, in November 30th, 2018, uh, I let my beloved wife, Diane, of 50 year, five years, go home to the Lord by having to uh, surrender to God's will and take her off life support. And most recently, 
uh, after 14 years uh, handing my uh, drug addicted uh, 35 year old grandson over to the Lord. How do you think your um, relinquishment matured during those three events? Did you see a, a change in how you were able to relinquish? Uh, yeah, I do. I, I think that uh, that uh, it it matured me uh, spiritually in my spiritual growth and uh, uh, in my prayer life to the place where despite whatever my circumstances uh, are, uh, that I've, I'm prepared to ask for God's will above all else and nothing more and nothing less. Marcia? And I've, I've talked about, before about um, our transition from being Northerners to becoming Texans. I've talked about that a lot. So you all know that was not an easy path for me to follow. I say I came kicking and screaming and that was, that was pretty accurate. Although the screams were silent and I kept them inside most of the time. Um, I just kind of knew that's what we were supposed to do, but it, it really wasn't my relying on God. Um, up until that point, I felt like God and I were pretty much in sync because he was giving me exactly what I wanted. So who wouldn't like that? But then all of a sudden, here comes this, you know, big move. And that was not easy for me. But over the last 42 years, um, my faith has deepened. Um, I've been able to accept things and let go of things and um, understand that he is in control. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah. I think for me, you know, for all of my life, uh, I've been saying the Lord's Prayer, and, and in the Lord's Prayer we say, you know, uh, your will be done at, on earth as in heaven. And I never really uh, thought about it, I guess, or really took the time to understand what I was saying. But uh, I think uh, the, the examples I just recently gave, uh, I really found out what it means and what I'm asking about. And if I'm prepared to accept God's will, Am I prepared to accept the consequences of his will? Mm -hmm. Anyone else? I think when I um, was reading this, it was more about my prayer life. Um, you know, through health issues and everything else that we've gone through through the years, my prayers have always been more pleading and you know them like if you plead hard enough he's gonna listen and give you what you want um and as the years went by and different situations <laughs> came up it became more um i can't say if it's your will if i'm still pleading and trying to be in control and i think when the last time when I finally was a realization for me was when we realized that our miracle might be in the next life and once we accepted that um, everything fell into place it wasn't how we had planned but it was a good you know our prayers were answered not the way I asked for it but they were answered even better so I think basically hitting rock bottom in, our, in the prayer life makes a difference too Yep. Lorraine? In my prayer life, and I'm just realizing that, like, when I pray for other people when they're sick and in trouble, and I always end it, like, in God's name, and I ask this of you and you're in Jesus' name, but when it's really serious, hard things in your life, I more often say, more often I say, it's your will, God, do what you will. But it takes the, the harder things in life for me, the 
to say that more, and it shouldn't be, I know, maybe that's that gradual process of getting to that's that way all the time. Thank you. Sometimes I think it just takes living experiences to realize how to let go. And we talk about prayer things too, but there's also um, what God's will is for us in our life, you know, what we should be doing to help others or whatever. And, you know, when people ask you to do things and your first reaction is no, and then the little tug keeps coming at you and you feel like, well, maybe, maybe I am supposed to be doing something else, even though it's not my top of the list, but, you know, to help others or whatever. So I think it works not only just in prayer, but in in how we minister to others too. Any other thoughts on that? Okay, I'll read the next part. Oh, Marcia, I was just going to comment that um, I kind of adopted Philippians four thirteen as um, my mantra. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So when I hit those bumps in the road and don't think I can do it or don't want to do it, I that um, that scripture, it, it, I find it very comforting and supportive. Right. And it's another way of surrendering. And the, the scripture, the verses that come just before that, um, in those, Paul talks about how he has learned to be content in any circumstance. And so I have really tried to um, follow his directive in that in that way too, to learn to be um, comfort comfortable in any content in the circumstances in which I find myself. And how do you, are, do you feel at peace, or do you feel is can you tell if there's a difference in how you look at things or? Oh, there's definitely a, a, a difference in how I look at things. I, I know I told you from the get-go, um, because you were the first person I talked to on July 28th, that I felt at peace. Even though we were in Michigan and we sat there and watched our house burn on our iPad, I, I had a peace about it. I just had a peace. I just felt like everything is going to work out the way it's meant to be. And... Um, that has been true. You've all been able to observe that. That has been true. Yeah. I, and like we've talked also, when Billy's heart stopped, it was just like there was a piece in the room that I can't explain. It's uh, beyond all understanding. Exactly. Oh, so, yeah. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, let's read the next part. Um, Foster says the prayer of relinquishment is a bona fide letting go, but it is also a release with hope. We have no fatalist resignation. We are buoyed up by a confident trust in the character of God. Even when all we see are the tangled threads on the backside of life's tapestry, we know that God is good and is out to do us good always. That gives us hope to believe that we are the winners regardless of what we are being called upon to relinquish. God is inviting us deeper into deeper in and higher up. There is training in righteousness, transforming power, new joys, deep intimacy. So what do you think about those words? What about the part about gives us hope? to believe that we are the winners, regardless of what we're being called upon to relinquish. Is that an easy task? No. Yes, Marsha? It's not, it, no, it's not an easy task. Life is not an easy task much of the time, but that is what we are called to do. And I think when you, when you get to a point um, where you can relinquish, and let go, um, there is a peace there, mm -hmm. but it's not easy. Billy and I call that jumping off a cliff. <laughs> and we've done that a few times and, you know, been the God has caught us at the bottom before we hit. So, but it's just that initial jumping off and trust mm -hmm. that 
you'll be okay. Yeah. Marsha, will you read Luke 22, 39 to 44? Yes. Jesus went out as usual to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples followed him. On reaching the place, he said to them, pray that you will not fall into temptation. He withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them, knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him, and being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. Thank you. What about that passage? Jim? Well, I, th I think it is truly a uh, prayer of relinquishment is truly a, as the scripture said, a blood, sweat, and tears prayer. Uh, you know, Jesus himself showed us the way through his grace to allow us to truly give up our will and let God's will be done. Thank you. I found it interesting that, you know, we hear the, the verse quite frequently about um, your will to be done, not mine, but they, I don't remember hearing frequently the following verse when it says that an angel from heaven appeared and strengthened him. I think that is so comforting that Mm -hmm. what we're all talking about is that's the peace um, that Jesus even received. Have, have you ever felt like that after a, a relinquishment or a surrender thing? Jim? Yeah, I have uh, in, in the three different examples that I gave, uh, you know, I didn't know when I surrendered my will to God's will, uh, what the result would be. Uh, I didn't know what the time would be. Uh, you know, we're all on God's time, not on ours. And, uh, uh, but I, I know that uh, I feel that grace and that peace uh, in knowing that whatever the outcome is, uh, I'm ready to accept it. I think one of the hard things is when we surrender is you feel like it's a bad thing. You know, you've, you've lost control. You're giving in almost like you're giving up, but actually you're taking on something. You're taking on grace and trust and hope. And when you experience it, you know it, but ahead of time, it's like that jumping off the cliff. You don't know, you think it's going to be bad. You're going to hit the ground, but in the, in the end, it's a positive thing. Have, do y'all feel that way? I do. I do. Yeah. Okay, let's look at these questions. Surrendering one's will to God would seem to make us less free, yet the scriptures testify that surrender leads us to true freedom in life. How does surrender to God increase our freedom? Do you feel like you weren't free until you surrender? Mm -hmm. Marsha? I feel like you, like, like I, had to take, had to make all the decisions. And um, when, when you surrender, you're no longer making all the decisions. God's making them for you. I remember Ken's mom, who really had a very strong faith, would tell us what will be will be. You've just got to let go. What will be, will be. I remember the day that she said to me, when you worry, you tie God's hands and he can't work in your life. And I think about, I think about her saying what will be, will be often. But that means surrender and letting go. Mm -hmm. I've always wondered, and I don't have an answer to this, but, you know, we pray, um, like, for example, example pastor craig's health and what's best for him and we pray continuously but god already knows what's going to happen and he already hears our prayers so do we continually pray for our benefit 
because we're not going to change God's mind. Have you ever thought of that? I do, you know, I do get some a, a benefit from praying for specific things, but I, I don't think I'm changing God's mind. I think he hears my plea and knows what I want, but um, I don't know. What do y'all think? Jim? I think that we do, uh, in a way, pray for our benefit because uh, deep inside of us, we know by surrendering our will to God's will, uh, he's going to give us his, his grace and his peace and hope. Peg? I think of uh, more so in the Old Testament, but there are times within the scripture that uh, it, it says God heard their prayers mm -hmm. and things went differently after he heard their prayers. So I do think that, I don't think our praying for healing or our, um, uh, whatever it is that we need, need that we want for, from God, I don't think it is wasted time. I do think that yes, we, God knows what the outcome is going to be, but that outcome may be us accepting what it is going to be. But I do think that God does hear our prayers. And I think that um, um, the scripture has told us that he hears our prayers. And he, uh, I think there is an influence there. I do. Thank you. And I think, um, I guess what I want to explain a little better is I, I've always prayed for someone else, but felt like it was just for someone else. But I receive at the same time because of the prayer or praying. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Last question. At the start of Jesus ministry, God, the father said, this is my beloved son. How did you, how did knowing how much he was loved help Jesus surrender to God's will, though doing so was costly? How can we know, Wingley, how can knowingly how much God loves you help you to surrender? Does that make a difference? Knowing God's love for his son and how much he loves us. No, I think it does, but <clears throat> it it's still really hard to let go. Um, you know, when you've you've been the fixing all your life, and you know, when we come to a, a situation that we can't handle, that's the first thing we do is try to fix it or call somebody that can. We just failed to call the, the guy that really can. Uh, unfortunately, it's it's always or seems to be much of the time, always the the last thing we do rather than the first. Good point. Anyone else? Charles? I was just thinking on the fact that Jesus said, not my will, but yours be done. You know, he was willing to give up his will. And if he's willing to do that, then who are we to think that we don't have to? You know, and we keep on praying. And very often it's not necessarily that our will ends up being done, but we understand what God's will is for us or for other people. And by continuing to pray, we get ourselves in line better maybe with, with what God's will is. Very true. Because, you know, if, if something's on my mind or praying for someone over a period of time, my prayers do change. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lorraine? Well, I think about Jesus knowing what's going to happen to him when he went up to the mountain to pray. And he prayed so hard, so earnestly that 
they said, you know, he played sweat blood, but he prayed so hard and he knew God's will, but he knew the outcome and what God was going to do, but it was necessary, necessary for him to do that. Jim? Well, I think, you know, we have to remember that Jesus himself said, you know, if there's any other way, Father, that you can remove this cup. But he understood the consequences of God's will. And I think that's a big thing for us when we, when we say, uh, you know, not my will, but yours be done. I, I said it earlier. Do, do we re are we really ready to accept the consequence of what his will will be? Yeah. And I think most of the time we're not. Good point. <laughs> Anyone else have any thoughts? Sometimes I think some of these studies are hard to put into words, mm -hmm. what you get out of them. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. a personal journey as well as a, a group journey. Mm -hmm. And this one was mm -hmm. pretty personal mm -hmm. for me. Exactly. Any final words? not peg will you lead us in the lord's prayer i will let us pray our father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven give us today our daily bread forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Yeah, thank you all for tuning in, and we should be back in January. In, in January with a new study. So thank you all. Merry Christmas. And hopefully, thank you. Carol. Thank you. Thank you. Hopefully, this will transcribe the way that it should. Last week, the computer goes through something and takes all of this and puts it into a file and about halfway through my computer shut down. So we did ah. not get this onto YouTube last week. It disappeared. It's in the oh, no. world. So we shall see what happens this week. Thank you, folks. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.